Welcome back everybody into another daily recap. Today is the 9th of August and it's a Tuesday. What we're going to see is of course what happened today during New York session on gold. Very very briefly, price was already uh, in between this supply and demand area. Uh, the demand area being like 1788, 1789 and 1787 which still was the, uh, the demand from yesterday. Uh, yes, it was a supply, strong supply area, if you remember. Now price broke above and was staying above through all uh, the London session. And as you can see, with New York, we had the first, after like 20 minutes, we have the first retest of the demand area and price failed to break, creates a new uh, candle and uh, candle confirmation and uh, the price in continuation up. As you can see here, this was my outlook before New York Open. This one was uh, the outlook of it after the COMEX Open. I didn't take this trade because it's, it was uh, before my trading time and because of, I would have entered here at the second candle, but it's one minute before the actual COMEX Open. So this COMEX Open, yes, can easily respect the demand area uh, but can even go uh, maybe I take the enter here go grab liquidity at the low of the demand area to jump back up and that's not what I want so uh, if the comics open will give me some further confirmation that's good but I don't know maybe I would just need to enter anyway based on supply and demand but I don't know I didn't enter and of course I missed this trade what I didn't miss was um, looking at the continuation buys. So as you can see here, this is a trade that I took and I saw that the price was making, after making this strong rejection, was finding a um, momentary resistance over there at the previous highs. But since this is not the supply area that I'm looking for, I'm not looking for sales. So even with this candle, I was not looking for sell. I was looking for buys and I entered at this bullish candle. Um, I had like 15 pips stop loss. As you can see, the, the entry was quite high. I should have entered more or less over there. Um, was quite high, but I closed full my position at these red candles for like, I think 10 pips, around 10 pips of loss. So I took my first loss. And as we're going to see, my analysis is that I'm not a good break and retest and maybe it's just normal. Price could have gone up very easily and that would have been a, a winning trade. The second thing is that when I want, when I look for uh, buys from demand area, then what I want is uh, to look for what? For new higher lows being created. And the new higher lows has to respect this area and um, create an actual low, new higher low after creating a new higher high. So that this break and retest is possibly quite, um, I don't know, I don't know what to say, uh, quite um, rushed, is expecting that the price will just, okay, three candles and then go up. It's not like we are in the middle of New York Stock Exchange or some sort of big volatility time. Uh, maybe waiting for a new higher low being created because I saw this candle that touched the PPL and then closed almost bullish. As you can see, it touched the PPL on the dot. And then that could have been the liquidity needed for price to continue bullish. But uh, of course, I already took my loss and I managed my loss. Anyway, uh, that's the first part of today. What happened next is that, okay, I remember my rules is until we reach supply after this demand, I'm only looking for uh, buys, continuation buys. So higher low being created, it's a new higher low being created and respected. And that's why uh, we are so above the uh, PPL exactly over here. Uh, that's why um, I entered a buy at this candle close. So now I had very clear in my mind that if the price 
respects as it is it is doing already for multiple times it respects the lows of this order block that is already now a, a support let's call it support as long as it is, uh, respects these lows for me price is still bullish why because we are coming from demand we break and retested the previous highs i still have 20 pips of range just to reach the supply so it's very good and that's where I entered. It's, it's a very, very good entry that I took exactly here. I don't remember the price level, but we're going to see it. What happened was that I poorly, poorly managed. And that's something that I really, really struggled with. That is, that is the new for our open. And price was 10 pips in profit. And I didn't want to risk anything with a probably pro with a possible pullback at the new four hour, but that doesn't make sense. That's just fear of losing. I placed the stop loss at break even. When the price was 10 pips, I placed manually the stop loss at break even. As you can see, price took me out because it was my. Actually, when the price was 10 pips, I placed the. I put the stop loss first at like uh, 10 pips as slightly below these candles to avoid losing the full stop loss because the, the price action was already showing me was already going into my direction so there was no reason to risk the full stop loss but even then i placed from then six seven pips i placed a break even price took me out and then just broke up and give me 50 pips for my entry which is uh, mind blowing for me. For me, mentally, psychologically, that was the hit, the nail of the coffin, as you can see. My entry was there. So that was an entry at the candle close. If for the spread, if I waited, it should, would have been there. Candle close, I entered. I didn't wait for anything further. Perfect entry. I think I could have not have any better entry. The point is that. I should have just kept a small stop loss. There's a reason why. If price breaks my PPL, then it's a loss. Otherwise, no. And as you can see, took out at break even and then went 50 pips in profit. And that was quite shocking for me uh, because I, I'm i very, very competitive with myself and that th this kind of things cannot happen, should not happen. So that's why for me, uh, acting like this, for me, the session is ruined. Look now, nice. And for me, the session is ruined and I didn't trade anymore because this very aggressive bullish candle, I don't know where is it coming from. I should have been part of it because I entered here at the very, very low and I missed, even I missed this very, very low entry. So this one would have been uh, like a, a 90 pips. 90 100 pips move that I missed completely and I took the second entry this one was a good I mean if I had a 20 pips stop loss I would have been still live anyway but I had an understanding okay I failed to take the first one but I enter at the second let's call, call it the, the floors first floor I missed it okay but now it's not like I'm looking for sales because price rejecting there no I am better than that. I'm not looking sales for looking for sales. I'm not entering rush sales because we're not a supply. And that's already something better. So I enter at the second floor and I just poorly manage. I enter the third floor and I poorly manage. But I mean, I'm in the right bias and I just have to uh, get better at uh, the fear of losing. Because anyway, that is also what happened because after that it's not like i'm bad so there's first full full close poorly managed as you can see the new low where low is being created from demand to supply i have to look for pullback buys pullback not a break every test is a very different thing but anyway uh this was this one was my entry out at break even and for our open that's uh, that's not good. 
it's, it's good that I never took 0 0.1 here, 50% of my position, even though the price was clearly rejecting, but it was very bad to exit over there. Here, as you can see, I understand live that the supply is turned demand. So that this is a breakaway test, it's a hand of pullback at support, and um, you can see, okay, you can see that the price went 50 pips, 40 pips more, and reached another supply area. This supply, which is 1800, I, I didn't chat, I chatted up now, so now we are going to look where it's coming from, but that's why I never look for sales here, only for price section, uh, but this was not a supply area. So um, only later on, now we're going to show you where it's coming from. I have these buys and I have these buys taken, uh, understanding the price section. Let me show you. Do, do, do. As you can see, I see this one, this one, I saw it late. I saw, and you see that there was no uh, strong demand, strong supply area. Demand area buys over there. Buys, that's, that's simple, very simple. It's uh, 25 pips, 26 to reach the previous highs. And again, you see, look at this price action at demand. One, two, three, four, five candles failing to break below uh, and to close below the PPL. That's a clear another entry. Yes, it might be that price is creating a wedge against the support, and you see that it will break. But look also where is where it will um, find support exactly at this previous. Or lows and from there double bottom and 70 pips okay anyway uh, okay there's clearly a wedge but the demand still is it valid 20 pips more than enough anyway then you see that the bearish pressure is uh, continuing you see that price is clearly creating lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high and now it's likely to create a new lower low. When it fails to make a new lower low, over here, double bottom and the price gives you a retest. Gives you a retest of the previous, uh, or the block eyes. Maybe you, even if you entered, that's what I, what I would do wrong. If I enter there, because it's it's a retest of the, or the block eyes, you never know when it is, you have to take the full, okay, I have the full stop loss available for you. Just go wherever you want. And then you can see, okay, and the wedge is broken, then the bearish trend. This is something that happens a lot. Um, after 4 a.m., 4 p.m., uh, that uh, the price goes in a structured way. So where is this supply coming from? Because now I saw, I mean, that this reaction at 1800, it's too clear to be something random. And if you go on the 15 minute, and this is, yes, the 15 minute, let me just hide the, um, let's go like this. Okay, if you go on the 15 minute, you just go on the left. There you go. Look, this is the 5th of July. Look at the price action, how strong it was, the rejection. First it bounced, then 1800.5 was exactly the price action, the price level where it failed multiple times to the New York um, to fail to break. We can even go to the five minutes, I guess. Let me just go back so that I have all the, okay. We can go back 
and see the price action over that. So it was the 5th of July. Of course, I will have to use the reply mode. Reply, sorry. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Look here. That was New York session of the 5th of July. Look at the bounce. Retest, multiple retests. Now New York price attempts to make new highs and fails. 30 and then you have the last breaker test at the new four hour open this is the pullback before the new four hour you have the break and retest of the order block close here you have the safest entry cells from there it will go down i don't know if there was any news 300 pips wow but anyway, you see that how the price action was clear. Yeah, but this is not a supply. This is just a, a, the last low. Look, oh, you can even have the safest possible entry retest of this last low. So you have high risk, high reward. You have this one, break a retest. So it's quite risky but still safer. You have the safer and the safest. Here, here, here. At the end of each pullback that respects a relevant PSA. And uh, that's what happened at 1800. That's why today we had this, uh, this is strong re rejection and reaction over there. So let's go back to our, to today. And that's, that's basically it. This is New York today. Nothing, uh, nothing else, nothing more. Supply to and demand. And yes. Quite, quite nice. Quite, quite bad uh, live trading on my side. But it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys tomorrow.